As you know, we've had some serious traction issues with the blue car. It's a massive launch. We're going to the back wheels. Yeah. Gets a bit squirmy when you're hammering. Yeah, that was good. You undid the fuel rig and it sprayed on you. The standard height stock start length, so you have to trim it down a little bit. All right, straight down. Yeah. Oh! So we started a new segment on the Camp Dog store and it's called Camp Dog Spares. We're gonna list all sorts of second-hand parts that we have here that we're no longer using and we're gonna put them on like heavily discounted if anyone wants to use them for their builds. Like this fuel pressure regulator. Still works, nothing wrong with it. $10 fuel pressure regulator. Um, behind you over here, Jerry, we got CT9 Turbo, TDO5 Turbo. We've got another intake manifold, sheet metal intake manifold going on there. So go and check out the Camp Dog store on Camp Dog Spares and there's gonna be all sorts of goodies on there. It's 26 today. We've got the big race meet on on the 16th of June. So we've literally got two and a bit weeks. Put this engine back together. We've got a Haltech 1500 lead that we've got to wire in, put all the sensors and stuff in there. I'm trying to fit that in with work and weekends as well. So we've got a lot of work to do. So um, just wanna give you guys a close up of the scoring that's on this bore. Didn't actually have any blow by. Believe it or not, so we're going to keep it like that and just keep running it. Um, we have high torque gasket here for the head gasket as well. We were using the Kometic ones, but you actually can't get those at the moment. We tried to contact Kometic, it just seems near impossible to get them. So we're trialing these ones now, and they are in the Camp Dog store if you want them. They are a little bit different to the usual ones and the Kometic ones. Everyone knows that the 4Es and 5Es are notorious for overheating, you know, having high water temps and that, and we've been trying to figure out for ages why. The water pump will pick the water up from the bottom of the radiator, comes in here, goes into the water pump, goes up into the block, the water's then in the block and coming up. So the problem we're facing here with these old gaskets now is there's no holes at the end, so the water can come up into the cylinder head, but it's getting trapped in cylinder three and four, which always seems to be the cylinders that have the, the bearing or bearing detonation, problems and yeah. detonation problems. So we're hoping now with these extra holes that are here, might increase water flow a little bit. Maybe there's an air pocket in there that's boiling. We don't know. So yeah, happy to try these and see what happens. So I'm going to get the head on now. I've got um, a whole bunch of genuine O-rings and gaskets. Again, we've got these on the Camp Dog store if anyone wants them. Put it all back together, get it back in the car, and we'll run outside and show Nick what he's got to do now. And here's the blue car. She's going to be going very soon. All right, so on the back of the blue car here, Nick, this fuel pressure regulator is like five years old, so we're gonna change that. This is one of the first Microtech looms I ever made. I used a stock standard style loom and just spliced it in best I could. So we'll rip all that out. Mm -hmm. So then, we can make room for the 1500 loom and relay box. Yep, and it'll be a nice fraction up for it. And this is, this is pretty much the same layout as all the other starts we've, we've done. We've got four coils, four injectors, the distributor. Bosch sensors for pressure and, fluid, uh, pressure and temperature. Pressure and temperature, so that's for the oil and the water. One cool thing with having that on the water is if we see the head lifting, the ECU will pick it up and we can just have it cut the ECU. You don't want the head lifting and pushing water straight into the overflow. I used to have my overflow while it's still here and that would pump out water and go onto the back wheels. Yeah gets a bit squirmy when you're hammering, hammering down the drag strip. So um, water, pressure temp, uh, water pressure sensor is definitely um, valuable. So we've got less than two weeks to get all this in, wired up, tested, tuned. And I'm not here next week. Oh, great. And Nick's not here ne next week, so let's crack into it. What's this? Oh, no, I was going to use that for something. Well, what, the, what would you do with that? Like, it's covered in fucking rusty... That's good. Yeah, that's sick, man. You're just jealous you don't have one on the camp dog. You're right. <laughs> this harness is a piece of shit. Oh, wait till you see it, mate. She's a work of art. <laughs> it's a piece of shit. What the f*** is that? It, it wraps around here. And it's got... masking tape oh. on it. To stop it from grinding out on things. There's two that come off the loom that go to the front of the car. Snip that one there. Take that off. 
and then there was wires coming in as well. So just to snip them, eh? Yeah. All right, so while Nick's sorting out the wiring, we've got a head stud kit that we need to put in. So once you get the oversized holes done and the studs go in, these two front ones have to be a little bit shorter because if you try and bolt the head on, the gears will rub on the standard height stock stud length. So you have to trim them down a little bit. And the head studs just get done finger tight. And pretty much ready to put the head on. Got a bit of ARP lube here. This took me so long to make this. I have to get Nick to hold this anyway. Yeah, it was good. It was good, man. So you undid the fuel rig and it sprayed on you? Yeah, like straight into my eye, yeah. I, I didn't realize <laughs> there was going to be pressure in there. Like, how, how is there still pressure in there? Like, yeah. that was unbelievably painful. Like, I, I straight away, as soon as it happened, it was stinging and I couldn't see. I'm like, I've lost my eyesight. So, just before you walked in, Nick, I was about to talk this up. We got some llamas. Oh, I got Nick. Oh shit, I need an extension. Ah. All right. While I got you here, Nick, I need you to hold the block there, buddy. So we've got to do these dogs up to 60 foot pounds. What are we going to now? Lots. We'll just go 70 just to make sure. No way. I've actually heard people saying that if you over talk them too much, it starts to distort the block. So there's one thing that's still holding us back. I did order a bunch of shims and I know the exact sizes that I need to put it back together. They just didn't turn up in time. We can still put everything back together and put the engine back in the car and I can just pull the rocker cover off once it's in there and chuck the shims in, bolt the cams back in put the time belt on later. If I don't do that, the shims might turn up late next week. We need to get this in now so we can get all the wiring sorted and, and start progressing or else we're just gonna run out of time. Oh. All right, straight down. Yeah. Oh.